So I've been looking at my stats and I seem to be trending upward pretty quickly. The problem with that is it means I have to do a lot more videos and I also have to fill a lot of orders. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd assemble some products and just talk about various things while I do the work that I have to do as an inventor. Right now I'm assembling the uh, sound laser transducer boards. If you haven't uh, seen the sound laser, I'll put a link down below. It's one of the many products that I have available online for sale. These are ultrasonic transducers like are found in your uh, parking detectors in your car. And what we do is we modulate the 40 kilohertz signal and make directional sound out of it. They're used in kiosks and things like that, art displays, Halloween's coming up, so they're pretty popular for that too. So have you seen these stick on feet? It's an invention that I think you guys would say, oh, what a great idea, I'm gonna make a million dollars. Let me just show you a little bit of the video while I continue assembling. So it's a great invention, right? Yeah, I thought so too, but not so fast. You think it's a million dollar idea? Well, yeah, it probably is. But is it a million idea for the inventor? Let's talk about that a little bit. So I did a little bit of Googling and I noticed that you could get a pack of five for a few dollars. Now think about that for a moment. You would have to sell a huge quantity of those things to be able to make millions of dollars. Now there's a problem with that. Unless you have a distribution center already set up throughout America, how are you going to distribute those and make money fast enough before everybody else knocks it off? Especially as we talk about a lot here, the Chinese who are very competitive with the United States. And I can pretty much guarantee you they're being manufactured in China right now anyway. So think about that for a moment. You've come up with that idea. You have little to no money, or maybe even have enough money to start it yourself. But you don't have the distribution network. What are you gonna do? You're gonna sell them on the internet at $5 for a set? $5 for a set of five? Five pairs? Think about how many you would have to sell on your website in order for you to make any money. The profit margins just aren't there. So now you have an idea a great idea at that. I think they're really kind of cool. I get my feet burned all the time on the uh, sands here in California, and I would honestly probably use them. Well, maybe not, but they are kind of neat. So anyhow, um, so yeah, now you're selling them on your website that you've built, and somebody sees this. And we talked about patents too. Let's say you did patent it. I haven't done the research. I don't know what the story really is behind them. I just watched that video and did a quick Google search. So you've patented it. What are you gonna do with this patent? If you haven't gotten somebody to license your idea already, like many of these other videos here on YouTube talk about, and they will be happy to charge you if you wanna license your idea or try to get your idea licensed, go ahead, I wish you luck. So let's just say you've patented it, and now the Chinese begin copying it. Who are you gonna to pay to stop them from bringing them into the United States and stop them from infringing on your patent. It is extremely expensive. And if you're only making a dollar or less profit per unit, there's no money in it for you. I, I, I hate to burst you know, your bubble and, and think that you can come up with ideas like this and make money that you can live off of. But the reality of it is in this day and age, there just isn't that kind of money even in that million dollar idea. Think about what it costs for the molds, the number of units that you have to sell in order to make any money. And then once it becomes popular, the possibility of somebody taking that idea and just making their version of it. And more than likely, they'll have a lot more money than you, which means you won't even be able to stop them. So the question is, why would you want to invent something like that in the first place? Well, I don't have a problem with you coming up with things like that. It's just that you need to be aware of what could possibly and most likely happen. And that's the problem. 
Most people think, oh, I'm gonna come up with this idea, it sells for a few dollars, I'm gonna need to sell millions of them to make any money, but there's somebody out there willing to pay me for my idea. Good luck, I keep saying that. The chance of that happening is very, very unlikely. That's just the reality of the world that we live in. You know, if you don't believe me, look at that um, movie that was out with Greg Kinnear. It's about how he invented the intermittent uh, windshield wiper and then spent the rest of his life suing, I think it was Ford, Ford Motor, to try to get them to uh, pay him for the idea because they wound up making it on their own. There's a million ways that somebody can make the same idea as you and avoid infringing on your patent. So you gotta keep that in mind. So I still have, this is what I do all day. So be careful what you wish for if you invent something. Remember, you do have to fulfill the orders. Money just doesn't fall from a tree. Uh, your customers do expect to get something in the mail. Um, we have been doing this, or I have been doing this for a very long time, and it's just part of it. My smaller quantity products, like the sound laser, where you know, I sell thousands of them, but not tens of thousands. I tend to manufacture and assemble myself. Um, other products, like my track stick and a few others, where I sell tens of thousands and millions of dollars of them, I manufacture those in other facilities where um, I have part of the facility and basically I place the orders and they fulfill them. It makes it a lot easier for me, number one, and I could never keep up with the, qu the quantity and being in Los Angeles, real estate is really expensive. This is our new facility I'll be talking about later, but we just moved in so a lot of it isn't done and there's a lot of construction going on. but. Um, you know, it's really expensive in Los Angeles to have a facility to manufacture things, employ the number of people need it to keep up with 10,000s or tens of thousands of orders. So it's much easier for me, and I recommend this for most inventors, to just farm it out. Um, if you're a good customer, believe me, you can get office space there and everything you need. That's what I do. So I have multiple locations throughout California where my products get manufactured. And yes, most of my products are manufactured in the U.S. Um, more and more of my component level stuff is made in China, but I do make a lot of the final products here in the U.S.A. and specifically California. That brings me up to another discussion. Um, I'll be coming out with a new line of products and we're gonna be discussing them on YouTube and on Invention Therapy about how I go from an idea to a complete line of products. It's actually a huge undertaking. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but um, all I could say is we're releasing lots and lots of products. I'm really excited about it. Like everything else in life, it's taken me longer than I expected, but that's okay. I mean, you know, as long as they get done and they're done right, that's the end goal. But my hope is, is that you're gonna see these videos about how we made them and it's gonna inspire you because although it's 30 products, you don't have to start out with 30 products. That's just what I'm, the level I'm at now. I started out with one product when I first started doing this. Um, the neat thing about it is most of the products cost me less than say $2,000 for the first 100. So each of the 30 is only about a $2,000 investment. And I'm not releasing them all at once. I'm releasing a few, letting the popularity grow, see how sales go, and then I'm gonna start releasing more and more of the products in the same line. Um, it's a really neat and easy manufacturing, or it's a really neat and easy to manufacture product. It's gonna look nice, and um, growth I expect is gonna be pretty fast. So I'm really excited about it, but you'll see more about that in future videos. So back to this uh, stick on foot. Again, I really like the product idea. I thought it was pretty neat. I mean, it's, it's one of those, why didn't I think of that? And you know, and the reason I didn't think of it is because honestly, although it is a mass market product, it, the chance of making any money on it is very unlikely. I know a few guys that have done products that were put on TV, the as seen for, on TV stuff. A few of them are actually quite well known. They sold 500,000 to a million of these products. 
at, remember, prices of like $19, $29, whatever the prices were. And they told me by the time they got done with paying for the airtime for television and for all the cost involved in setting up the product and getting it to, to market, there was real, really no money left. It was a million dollar idea, just not a million dollar idea for them. So this is what we have to think about when we invent stuff. Who is the money really for? Is it your idea that you just want to invent a product and say, hey, I have a product that's maybe patented or not, but sells millions and millions of them? If that's your goal, go for it. I was told that I'm greedy, that I'm not a real inventor because I do it for money. That's my choice. I have a wife, I have a family, I have a home in California. Those things cost money. I have this new office that I'm paying for, the construction, all that costs money. It's all done to invent more products so that I can do what I enjoy doing, but also to make a living. So it depends on what your goal is. If you want to stay in your parents' bedrooms or live in a small ha uh, apartment for the rest of your life and just be able to say that you invented something, well, good on you if that's what you want to do. It's your choice. I, some of the products that I've invented, my track stick, allowed me to travel the world for 10 years. We were never home. We were always traveling through Europe, the Caribbean, all kinds of places. We loved it. I had a great time. I was even able to go to school when I lived in Italy and get my master's in um, industrial design. So if that's your goal where you just want to live a, a simple and carefree life, you can do it. Everything costs money. And if you want to be a real inventor, I suggest, like I have in a lot of other videos, that when you make decisions about what you're going to invent, that you invent something that's going to at least cover your expenses and make you a little bit of money that makes it worthwhile. It's your choice how much money you want to make. And then the flip side of this, don't think that you have the next million or billion dollar idea. Everybody has ideas. That doesn't mean that it's going to be successful. There's a million things standing between you and making real money with your invention. And that's what we're gonna try to help you get through in these uh, videos. I have about 60 of these videos to do according to my stats, so that's why I'm doing them like this. I hope that you enjoy this new format that I'm using where I'm just talking to the camera, but they seem to be very popular on YouTube, so that's what I'm trying to do. I might do a couple of live, view, uh, live streams as well, but I found that they don't seem to track really well and don't draw a lot of attention because I simply don't have enough subscribers. So, uh, and that brings me up to my other point. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be doing all kinds of videos like this that are informative and that teach you the real way that you can make money as an inventor. Again, hit the subscribe button, hit turn on notifications, and I'll see you next time on Invention Therapy.